going to kill us. Well, take care of things, Marshal. I'll get them. I'm catching me some bank routers. I've never seen it done this way before. Uh, it's a new idea of mine. I've... Here they come. Got him. Come on. It's no use, boys. They won't fit. Drop your guns. Yeah. Where you're going, you ain't gonna need no boots. <laughs> All right, Fuzz, come on down. Nice work, Fuzzy. Ah, uh, they shouldn't have pushed me around. I'm old death and destruction when I get riled. And he riles mighty easy, Marshal. <laughs> you boys are in line for a nice chunk of reward money. This pair has been wanted for some time. Come on. My money is not Oh, and I had mine. I had mine. You know, Fuzz, there's a lot of this country we haven't seen. Maybe after we collect that reward money, we can take the trip we planned together. Ah, uh, Billy, I'm getting tired eating trail dust all the time. I'd like to find a nice, peaceable spot and take root. You take root? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Come on. <laughs> Hey, 
This country is being overrun more and more by an organized gang of outlaws. And we are at the crossroads for every rustler riding to and from the border. And the leader of the gang is making his headquarters right in this vicinity. Well, you know, I admire your courage, John, but not your common sense. Those editorials you print in your paper are making you some bad enemies. Maybe so. But I'm still going to play square with my friends. And I'll keep up the fight until we have law and order. Are you accusing me of not doing my duty? You're not the best sheriff in the world, Sam. But I think you're doing all you can. That's why this town needs a telegraph line. We stand a chance of breaking up that gang if we can be in touch with the rangers all the time. Then the rustlers could be headed off between here and the border. Why, the telegraph company won't spend the money to run a line into a one-horse town like this. What to prevent us from raising the money to build it ourselves? They'd let us hook onto the main line at Kingville. <laughs> That'd cost a lot of money, John. Better to spend it that way than to have the outlaws take it away from us. And I'd rather keep on fighting than to sit back and let a bunch of outlaws have free run of the country. Well, now, maybe John is right. Sam! Sam! Come on, man, Sam! Sam! Is she hurt bad? I don't know. I'm afraid so. Men, scatter and find the man that fired that shot. Hurry now. Go on, that way. Come on, here. Will somebody help me get him in? They'll have the doctor here right away. Don't worry. I'll be all right. Of course you will. I've been afraid something like this might happen. I warned you to take it easy. What I said still goes. I'll take up the fight as soon as I'm on my feet again. You want to stop counting that money, Fuzz? You'll wear it out. Yeah. I'll stop when it starts to look frayed. <laughs> well, what are you going to do with your share of the reward? Get married, maybe? Hmm? I say, how are you going to get married? Mm -mm. I'm going to keep it. You know, you can get yourself a mighty fancy wedding with all that money. You know, Billy, this money's going to give me the opportunity I've been looking for. I'm going to buy a little business and settle down and lead a calm and peaceful life. <laughs> I've always hankered to be somebody. Wear good clothes. And... So that when I walk down the street, why, people will turn to me, bow, and say, <laughs> Howdy, Mr. Jones! Oh. <laughs> What's the salt that there, Fuzzy? Oh, well, stop making a noise like a loco mule and help me round up this money. <laughs> You're going to lose it all yet, you know. <laughs> oh, Jim, the sale starts yet? How are they doing? How are they doing? What's all the excitement over there? How should I know? I'm a stranger here, too. Oh, I beg your pardon, Sheriff. Uh, what's going on over there? Well, it's a foreclosure sale. I'm selling the newspaper at public auction. Would you be interested? <laughs> Not while I'm in my right mind. Well, I don't blame you for feeling that way. My father gave everything he had including his life, in a fight to help break up this gang of outlaws. 
He did this for you and for all the other honest people. But if you let this outlaw gang buy up this newspaper, all of his sacrifice will have been made in vain. But we're ranchers, Edith. We don't know anything about running a newspaper. But I do. I was raised in a newspaper office. You can certainly count on my help. We all admire your dad for the fight he was making. And we're proud to do all we can to keep the ball rolling. Billy, that's it. What are you talking about? That's what I've been looking for. I'm going to buy that newspaper. You run a newspaper? <laughs> Why not? I got as much brains as anyone. Besides, the newspaper editor leads an easy life. He ain't got nothing to do but sit around and write things. And everybody looks up to him as being important. Okay, Fuzz. You know, that, that reward money's going to burn a hole in your pocket until you get rid of it. Now go on. Get it over with. Hey, you talk like I had no intelligence. Well, uh, where have you been hiding it all these years? <laughs> hey, wait a minute, Fuzz. I'll go with you. Now then, gentlemen, let me have your attention, please. As you all know, this is a foreclosure sale. And the property goes in its entirety to the highest bidder. Now, let me hear you talk. What am I bid? 500. I've got 500. Do I hear 750? 750. I've got 750. Do I hear $1,000? Get busy. 1,000. I've got $1,000. Do I hear 1250? 1250. 1500. You better change your mind. You don't want a newspaper. I'm giving you some good advice. Take it or leave it. I've got fifteen hundred dollars. Do I hear seventeen fifty? Fifteen hundred dollars. Going for fifteen hundred dollars. Once. Going for fifteen hundred dollars. Twice. Do I hear seventeen hundred and fifty? Better stay out of this, Spud. Uh, since when you riding herd on me? Seventeen fifty. Two thousand. Uh, Keep your elbow out of my ribs. Yes, again. Now beat it. I've got two thousand dollars. Who'll make it twenty-two fifty? Twenty-two fifty. I've got twenty-two fifty. Who'll make it twenty-five hundred dollars? Twenty-five hundred. Twenty-five hundred dollars. I've got twenty-five hundred dollars. Who'll bid twenty-seven fifty? Twenty-seven fifty. Three thousand. I've got three thousand dollars. Do I hear thirty-two fifty? Gentlemen, let's get on with the sale. I'm bid three thousand dollars. Do I hear thirty-two fifty? Three thousand dollars once. Three thousand dollars twice. Three thousand and fifty cents. Three thousand dollars. Say, what kind of a bid is that? And it's a bid, and you got to take it. All right. I've got three thousand dollars and fifty cents. Who'll make it thirty-two fifty? Three thousand dollars and fifty cents once. Three thousand dollars and fifty cents twice. Hey, what happened to him? What's the matter with you there, man? You sick? Looks like he's got into jail. Hey. He's got all the symptoms. <laughs> Are you all through, gentlemen? Straighten up, <laughs> come on, old boy. Straighten up. Sold to that man right over there for three thousand dollars and fifty cents. I hope Fudge won't forget your friends now that you're so important. Uh, get away, boy. You bought him. <laughs> hey, you can't sell to him. I didn't finish bidding. The sale is closed. You had your chance to bid. But it ain't legal. He hit me in the bread basket. I couldn't talk. I'm sorry, but the sale is over. Well, it ain't for me. It's all your fault. <laughs> His idea, Sheriff. I try to be obliging. I don't care whose idea it was. I don't want any more of it. Okay, okay. Come on inside and I'll make that transfer. What's the matter? That 
fellow slugged me. I couldn't bid till it was all over. I don't know what happened to Rusty. He wasn't on the job. Three thousand dollars. Where's the fifty cents? Lots of luck, bud. <coughs> you pay three thousand dollars and fifty cents, or the bid is no good. <coughs> What's the matter? What's the matter, bud? Now you see what you made me do. You made me swallow the fifty cents. Now I can't buy a newspaper. <laughs> Hey, loan me 50 cents, will you? Uh-huh, now take it easy. You know, they say the sure way to lose a friend is to loan him money. Oh, now, Bill, you wouldn't break up our friendship for 50 cents, would you? I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll buy a half interest in the newspaper for 50 cents. What do you say? Why, well, you dirty low-down skin plate. You horse thief, you. You get me over a barrel and then you try to steal my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, friends, here's your 50 cents. <laughs> Maybe you ain't always going to call you. Okay. <laughs> There, sir. All right. And there's your bill of sale. Oh, Miss Martin. Let me introduce you to Mr. Jones, the new owner of the paper. How do you do? How do you do, ma'am? I wish you all the luck in the world. Uh, thank you. Oh, uh, Miss Martin, I'd like to have you meet my pal, uh, Billy Carson. Miss Martin, how do you do? Hello. Her father, John Martin, used to be the owner of the paper. Oh. I have a few personal belongings, some things of great sentimental value, so if you don't mind, right, I... You, you just go right ahead and just take anything you want. The fellow who bought the paper don't look none too smart. We won't have any trouble handling him. We'd better not have any trouble with him. I counted on you to buy that paper. You messed it up. Thank you very much for all your kindness, Mr. Jones. All the rest belongs to you. Yeah. I, I don't want you to feel like you're being thrown out or nothing like that. Why, I, uh, looks like you've had a pretty tough deal all around, ma'am. Yes, you might call it that. Goodbye. Oh, uh, Miss Martin, uh, ma'am, there's uh, a lot of gadgets around here. They're not the kind of gadgets I'm familiar with. I'd be more than grateful if you just sort of stick around till I get the hang of things. Well, I don't know your reason for buying the paper or what policy you intend to follow. My father dedicated the paper to a crusade of law and order, and nothing could make him change his mind. If you intend to follow along those same lines, I'll do anything I can to help you. Well, I've always admired uh, law and order. I wouldn't go for nothing else. Well, you'll need a lot of courage. This country is dominated by a gang of outlaws, and the sheriff is helpless against them. My father was trying to get together the honest ranchers, and the outlaws murdered him. M murdered him? Yes. And they'll murder you, too, if you try to fight against them. Fuzz, is this your idea of a calm and peaceable life? Looks like you've got a bear by the tail. Mm, if I have, I'll come home with his hide. Yeah, but what I want to know is, are you going to be on the inside or the outside? Like that new editor needs to be educated. Here he comes now. Well, how do you do, Mr. Jones? <laughs> and how are you this fine morning, huh? Say, those are those are mighty nice clothes you're wearing. <laughs> Go ahead and laugh. Go ahead and laugh. <laughs> I'll be wearing fine clothes when you're nothing but a saddle tramp. <laughs> Give me a glass of beer. I need a chase for all that ink on me.
Did somebody throw something? Maybe a hand flew by. Can I play too? Take it easy. You're starting to play a little too rough. You're going to horn in where you've got no business once too often. There's always a chance of that. Now run along before I lose my temper. Take your little playmate with you. You know, Fuzz... I'm beginning to like this common, peaceable life you've been talking about. <laughs> Hello. Mind if I stick around and watch you work? No, sit down and make yourself comfortable. Thanks. Uh, Fuzzy, I've set up the new type for those handbills calling for the general meeting. Uh, will you run them off for me? Yeah, I'll have them out in just two seconds of a cat's tail. Reporter and typesetter, the Red Rock Free Press. Uh, what can I do for you? Just drop by to get acquainted. I'm Leif Barlow, owner of the Bar LB. I'm pleased to meet you. Thanks. You know, I admire your courage, but I just wonder if you know what you're up against. That's pretty strong talk. Well, when I goes after a bunch of outlaws, I don't send them love and kisses. I hope you can prod all the ranchers into building that telegraph line. But just the same, I'd hate to be standing in your shoes. You better not crowd old Fuzzy. He's death and destruction when he gets riled. I expect he'll get a chance to prove that. You'll be doing a great public service, Mr. Jones. That is, uh, if you live long enough to finish the job. Uh, good luck. On so thick. I only repeated what I heard you say many times, Bud. Uh, can't you take a joke? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Fuzzy. I admire a man who can stick to his convictions. No, I don't put myself up as being so brave. I really brave men are modest. They don't have to brag. How can you sit there and do nothing? Aren't you going to help your friend in this fight? Well, I just sort of get into enough trouble that happens along with Edith. I don't go out and look for any. Could it be that you're afraid? Well, no, I wouldn't say that. I'm just sort of fond of my hide, not eager to get it full of bullet holes, that's all. Oh! Oh, fuzz. There must be an easier way of doing that. <laughs> well, why don't you try it? I bet this will get us some action. 
Howdy, Sheriff. Howdy. Say, uh, what do you know about those two fellas? Well, I've got nothing against them, if that's what you mean. Say, what's on your mind? Nothing in particular. I was wondering, have you any idea who might have killed John Martin, the fellow that used to run the newspaper? No. Maybe you can tell me who it was. Well, I think it was someone that didn't like newspaper men. <laughs> no. Uh -huh. Well, I think it was somebody that didn't like the way he combed his hair. Say, suppose you attend to your business if you've got any. Let me attend to mine. Yeah, th thanks, Sheriff. You two all steamed up about. That fuzzy-faced Ebbs has called a mass meeting at the Weaver Ranch. Promote money for the telegraph line. We'll have to put a stop to that before it gets started. I'll go to the meeting and keep an eye on things. You get some of the boys and break it up. Well, how will we go about it? Well, if one of you sneaked in and started a little bonfire, they'd all stampede out of the house. Then you could start throwing lead. Leave it to us. They won't feel like any more powers about telegraph lines. Good. I get busy. Hello. How's the newspaper business? Just fine, thank you. May I give you one of these? No, no, I've already seen one of them. Can we expect you there? Well, I don't know for sure, Miss Edith. You see, I, uh, I might be busy. You look it. The free press is carrying on the fight that cost John Martin his life. And we can't get nowhere unless you all back us up. Now, you know that the outlaws are organized. And you have got to organize in order to lick them. I'm willing to buy chips in this game. It sounds like good sense to me. Well, I don't believe in jumping into anything without giving it some thought. No outlaws bothered me, so why should I hunt for trouble? Well, you're the only one in the valley that hasn't. Well, I know. You notice how Rafe Barrow's been throwing cold water on this meeting all evening? I'd like to play safe, I suppose. You know, Fuzzy, I can't understand why your friend Billy Carson didn't show up. If he'd had any sense of loyalty at all, he'd be here to back you up. Oh, well, Billy's all right. You can gamble. He's got a good reason for doing whatever he's doing.
takes money to build a telegraph line, and we can't do it unless all of us kick in. Well, I'm for it, and I'll pay my share. I'll make oh, yours, sir. Well, I have a hunch we're going to run into a lot of trouble. What's the matter, you cold? What's happened to Rusty? Did it take him all night to start a fire? I happened to be passing by, Mr. Weaver, and I saw this fellow trying to build a fire alongside of your barn. I thought maybe you'd like to ask him how come. <laughs> Guess I tapped him a little too hard. Somebody get me a glass of water, please. So, uh, you were just passing by, huh? Well, Fuzz, I had an idea this gathering wouldn't meet with everybody's approval, and I was kind of curious to see what might happen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I bet he's got a lot of information you'd like to print in your newspaper. Mm -hmm. Well, he'll tell what he knows if he cares anything about his neck. Now, listen, mister. Who are you taking orders from? I'm not taking orders from nobody. You know, line's not going to get you anywhere except a rope collar. You know, you're just one of the little fellas that do the dirty work. Who's the boss of your outfit? I don't know what you're talking about. I saw you right up outside. Who are your friends waiting for you? Why don't you go and ask them? Uh, we will after we stretch your neck a couple of inches. You ain't hanging nobody. You wouldn't like to lay a little bet on that, would you? No, no, we're not going to hang anybody first. He's not crazy enough to die just to protect someone else. Now, look, mister. You tell me who the boss of your outfit is, and we'll give you a chance to get out of the country. What do you say? What do you say? I've got nothing to talk about. Look, mister, I wouldn't blame you for keeping quiet if it gets you anything. But how do you expect to get a payoff after you're dead? You've got no right to take the law in your own hands. You've got to turn me over to the sheriff. I don't think the sheriff is going to be very interested in you after we're through with you. Let's get out of here. those outlaws. No, those fellows will be gone before that bunch gets started. Besides, I don't feel like riding around all night. You're a strange man. I can't understand you. There's nothing mysterious about me, Miss Edith. I just take life easy, that's all. You know, someone in this room broke that lamp. It wasn't done from the outside. Well, I can't believe it was any of the ranchers. I've known all of them for years. Somebody in this room was mighty nervous about what he might have been scared into saying. Well, I guess I'll turn in for the night. Don't look like we're being followed. That leaves you in the clear, but I've got to hide out. You better head for Lake's ranch. He'll tell you what to do. I've got an idea of my own. I'm going to blast that Billy Carson wide open. Oh, it was no trouble. I, I was coming this way. Otherwise, I suppose I wouldn't have had the pleasure of your company. Well, I wouldn't say that. I'll put your horse up for you. <laughs> Good night. Good night.
Good morning. If you're looking for work, pitch in. Otherwise, goodbye. I thought you might invite me for dinner. We feed no grub line riders. No work, no eat. <laughs> but I'll have to see the boss. Where's Fuzzy? He went to the railroad for supplies. Oh. Who went with him? No one. We're short-handed around here, and he can do for a little while without someone to talk to. You people don't seem to realize you've got a fight in your hands. What do you mean by that? Well, this telegraph line isn't popular with everybody in the neighborhood. I might try to see that Fuzzy didn't get back with those supplies. Do you think he's really in danger? Maybe. Maybe not. I'll ride down the road a piece, see if I can find him. Goodbye. Bye. There he is. Leif said he'd be along about this time. Why do you always do things the hard way? Eh? Uh, stop cackling and get me out of this. Uh, I'll get your head on sure like to lay my hands on them, fellas. Hey, who were they? I don't know for sure, but they look familiar. Yeah, if I ever get them called up, they won't look familiar even to their mother. I guess that's the easy way to get out of a wagon. <laughs>
Hello, Abe. Hello, Edith. Grab a plate. No, thanks. I just dropped by to see how things were going. Just fine. Where's Fuzzy? Well, he went after more supplies. Should be back by now. Oh, it's good. Well, I'll drop back and talk to him later. for me, Tex. I had a little trouble. The gang tried to stop me, but I rode right on through. Uh, Billy here, he happened a long time just to lend me a little hand. <laughs> it seems like you always happen around just at the right time. Is that bad? I'd say it was rather good. You know, I've reconsidered your case, and I've decided that you may have some dinner. Coffee? Here you are. Help yourself. Thank you. Hey, what am I supposed to live on? Flowers and sunshine? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Jones. Here you are. <laughs> you raised ten thousand dollars among us. That ought to finish the job. I'm back in this play to the finish, and it's running me pretty close on cash. Well, I haven't found any money growing on trees. I've kicked in my share. And if it's agreeable with the rest of you, I'd say that Fuzzy Jones was the one to take charge of the money. Sure. I agree with you. Well, you can rest assured, I'll take good care of it. Oh, oh Fuzzy, yeah. what's the matter with you? Uh, it may not be as pretty as it was, but it's just as good. Uh, if that's the only dirty money you ever handle, Fuzzy, you'll be doing all right. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Fuzzy. Good night. Good night. Good night, Good night, Wally. Now, Fuzz, now you got all that money, what are you going to do with it? Yeah, I'm going to find a place to hide it, and then I'm going to lock up right away. Miss Edith, do you... Happen to be going my way? Possibly. Good night, Fuzzy. Good night. <laughs> Good night, Fuzzy. Good night. I'll see you in the morning. Yeah. Thanks for seeing me safely home. Uh, there was no trouble. I was coming this way. Otherwise, I suppose I wouldn't have had the pleasure of your company. Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> you know, I, I'm worried about Fuzzy with all that money. He can be getting into more trouble than any human being I know. But no one knows about it except the men who were at the meeting. I have an idea that's one too many, Edith. Well, good night. Good night. I'll be seeing you. That won't call for too much exertion. I'll be around. about going anywhere. No, not a word. You know he has a lot of our money in his pocket. I wouldn't worry about that. He hasn't run out with our money. I hope you're right. All right, 
get down. I found this fella high tailed out of town. You're a cockeyed liar. I was a head and into town. Well, where have you been? I don't know. Walking in your sleep, I suppose. No such thing. A gang jumped me last night. They hit me over the head, and when I woke up, why, well, they had me tied on a horse. Rode me around all night blindfolded. Then they kicked me off, and that's it. You'd better think up another story. That one isn't so good. Well, why should I think up stories? Maybe you're planning to get away with that $10,000. I'm no thief. That money's right where I hid it last night, and I'll prove it to you. thought he'd fool us with that cock and bull story. Why, I'll bust you wide. You bust nobody. Now, you dig up that money and fast. I don't know where it is. That's pretty smart. He promotes a telegraph line so as to get us to put up the money for it. Then he skips out with it. Now, I'm in favor of hanging something on those telegraph poles. And I don't mean wire. I'm not in favor of that, Barlow. I got a pretty tough hand to call. You know, when you do things in a hurry like this and find out later that you hung the wrong man, there isn't much you can do about it, is there? What's going on here? Well, Sheriff, Barlow there claims that Fuzzy stole some money. I'd like to see it settled in court, lawful and proper like. And that's just the way it will be. Billy, you don't think I stole that money. Now, look, Fuzz, we've been pals a long time. Don't ask silly questions. Come along. Don't worry, Fuzz. Billy, Fuzzy didn't steal that money. What are we going to do? I don't know. He's in a pretty tight spot. Goodbye. thought he was on the level, but it's hard to believe that story he told. How'd you happen to come here this morning, Mr. Weaver? Uh, Leif asked me to come along. He didn't say why. Oh, I see. Thanks. Tail him and see what he's up to. Right. Tell you, men, he's got the money hidden. And if we can get to him, we might be able to make him tell where. Right. Right. Let's, Let's get after him. Right. Let's get after him. Right. Right.
That's right. You show good sense. Now, where's that money you stole from Fuzzy? How should I know? Because you were there when it was stolen? That's what you think, but you can't prove it. I wouldn't be too sure about that. You see, I happen to know that Barlow's the boss, and he'd have the money. He doesn't think that anybody suspects him. I get over to that wall, Pete, and face it. Go on. I wouldn't advise you turning around. These ink stains prove this to be the stolen money. You know, you're just a sucker in this deal. Tell you what I'll do with you. If you'll come clean and cooperate, I'll, I'll save your neck. Yeah, I promise you. There's no sense waiting for a trial. We know who stole the money. So let's start some action. Get it over with quick. That's all right with me, Barlow. I found the money, and I brought along a witness to tell you where I found it. Stop talking, Pete. I'll keep my promise. Yeah. Now listen, men. He's right. Arson, you've meddled in my business for the last time. Drop your gun. You'll have smooth sailing from now on. Thanks to you. I just happen to be around at the right time now and then. I guess I'll be drifting along. Are you leaving town? <laughs> I never stay at the same place very long. Mr. Jones, and how are you this fine morning, eh? <laughs> I told you I'd be wearing fine clothes when you were just a saddle tramp. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right, Fuzz, and uh, I'm on my way right now. Goodbye. Hey, you ain't going, is you? Sure, sure I am, Fuzzy, but don't you worry. We'll be seeing each other sometime. Fine to see you. Bye, Fuzz. I'm giving you this newspaper a lock, stock, and barrel. It's yours. Goodbye. Hey, Billy! Billy! <laughs> 